Common things that can be dangerous to dogs, part eight. Cooked bones. Although raw bones can be a healthy addition to any dog's diet, it's best to exclude cooked bones. These have a tendency to splinter, which can cause intestinal obstructions or even perforations. If that happens, surgery might be required to save your dog. If you think your dog might have gotten its hands on a cooked bone, best thing to do is to not panic. Go ahead and observe your dog's behavior, and if it shows any symptoms, contact your vet. I was at the supermarket, and I saw a bucket of noodle horse eggs. I was completely shocked. I brought one home to show the girls, but they seemed to know about it. Little Russian lady said they've been selling their eggs back to the grocery store. And that Aura got the idea one day when she was eating her tail. I couldn't be mad. It was their eggs, so it's their property. It does explain all the new toys, though, that's for sure. Why do dogs have bumps on their heads? All dogs have a little bump or ridge on their head called an occiput, which is part of a larger bone structure called the sagittal crest. And aside from just being really cute, it does serve some functions. Scientists believe the bone structure helps prevent the skull from being crushed. It also aids in head movement relative to the spine. It is also a connecting point for the dog's jaw muscles, and animals with large sagittal crests tend to have very strong bite forces. Dog's bite forces also vary dramatically. A pit bull has a bite force of 235 psi, whereas a Kangal dog has a bite force of 700 PSI, while humans have a pathetic bite force of 162, unless of course you happen to be a conehead. In the past, the bump on the dog's head was referred to as the wisdom knot, and it was thought that dogs with larger bumps were smarter. This is thought to be partially true because the bumps vary dramatically between breeds, and certain very intelligent breeds like the bloodhound and the collie have very pronounced bumps. The occiput also contains a grouping of very sensitive nerves. Will you like that? Sure night. Next up in the Tandem Leash event at Esper and Aura, these two really haven't been on the same page uh, in all the rest of these games. Oh, little leash tangle there, that's going to cost them a couple points. Uh, not really sure if they're on the same page here. Looks like Aura's going to go for a nice flop. Yes, and she's down on the ground. Esper's trying to direct things, little, do a little double lutz here. Oh, and a 360 to close it out. Is it enough? <laughs> <laughs> Today is little Russian lady's birthday. We wanted to do something special for her. Oh, there's a fly. Let me get that for you. So we decided to take a trip to see little Russian lady's brother, Vladimir. After that, we let her choose what she wanted to do. Esper then did some of her favorite activities, including sleeping under a lemon tree in the sun. And of course, she wanted to practice her wind magic on the lawn. Please don't create a tornado. And of course, she got as many treats as she wanted. Nom nom. Hey, horse, what happened? Hey, cow, what happened to your snit? Aura, what? Hey, horse, you feeling okay? I wanted my little, little noodle horse to meet actual horses. She really didn't know what to think of at first. I mean, they're much larger than her. She seemed particularly interested in the little stubby horse. Although I don't think their first meeting really went as planned. We decided that we would try again in a little bit. Once she got up the courage, she decided to try it again. But then the horses made a noise, unlike anything she'd ever heard before. I didn't want to push her into a situation she wasn't comfortable with. So I decided to let her play with the cat. She really just wanted to lick him in the face. But I'm not sure that he liked it very much. After that we blew off some steam and played a nice game of tag. I always seem to lose these games cause she's way too fast. Asper of course spent most of the day sleeping. That's what she does best. She's cute. Can someone please help me identify what kind of birds these are? I've never seen them before, but they're very nice. Maybe they're some kind of albatross? Please help. We started today with Aura meeting our goat named Gladys. I don't think she was very happy to see her. After that, Esper took a little bit of a nap in front of a bunch of cows. If you ask me, they looked a little mean. It was a really hot day, so after that we decided to take a bath in a horse trough. I don't know if Aura actually liked it. 
but I am sure that Esper wanted nothing to do with it. After that, the little country dog decided to do some zoomies to dry off. Very good form, almost as good as Esper. We wound down the day having a nice little playtime. And then after that, I decided to serenade everybody with a nice tune. Russian lady wanted to go back and talk to the mini horse peanut butter. The last time they talked, it didn't go so well. But this time seemed different. It was almost like they were having conversation. I can't speak noodle horse and I can't speak mini horse, so it was hard for me to understand. I don't know what they're saying. We decided to take little Russian lady and little little Russian lady on a hike to see the sunrise. They weren't too happy about getting up early, but I think they enjoyed themselves. After the long trek home, we decided to have the girls help us with the horses. But I think little little Russian lady would rather sit in the dirt and play with her bone. When we finally came inside, little Russian lady's brother Vladimir was very happy to see us, and he smiled. Oh, isn't your teeth cute? It was a long day, so we decided to make them a special dinner. I think little little Russian lady was very excited. After dinner, everything settled down, but little Russian lady really wanted to talk about her day. She seemed so happy and we were too. Russian lady, you want to give big Russian lord a taste of the homeland? <laughs> he seems to like it. You have such big leaps. I can't believe it. Oh man, you almost got it. I, I think he really enjoyed your present. <laughs> Good work. Please don't eat her arm. <laughs> I started to get the feeling that Aura wanted yeah, to go home. Drive. The night oh, before, yeah. Little Russian Lady made a new friend. I told them not to lick it. I guess it can make you go crazy. The girls took a second to say goodbye to their new friends. Noodle horse and horses together forever. <laughs> and then Little Little Russian oh, Lady said goodbye to the lizard we found. We had time for one last spin on the long to tire the girls out for their long trip. <laughs> I'm going to miss the desert, but it's time to get back to the city. Things people never tell you about Borzois. First, let's dispel some rumors. Although they are quite mysterious, they don't speak only in riddles. And though they look like an AirPod, they have no Bluetooth connectivity. That said, there are some quirks about this dog breed. Number one, they are extremely lazy. Think Snorlax on Ambien lazy. It's like owning a Ferrari. You leave it in your garage all day, then rip it down Olympic Boulevard at 3 o'clock in the morning. 2. They almost never bark. 3. They shed like crazy. 4. Their greatest sign of affection is if they lean on you. 5. There is a phenomenon known as the sight hound uppercut. You're calmly petting your dog and they just blast you in the face with their snoot. Aura literally split my lip this morning. 6. Borzois are very independent. They're like your friend who always makes plans with you, but has no intention of actually showing up. And when they do show up, you're like, oh my god, you came!
What it's like having a punchable face. I've known for a long time that some people see me and they just want to punch me. I was a very punchable baby. I was an extremely punchable toddler. I got even more punchable during my adolescence and reached peak punchability in high school. Tried to grow my hair out, but that just seemed to make things much worse. I also tried growing a mustache, but that just led to a drinking problem. I'm also a classically trained mime, which you all know is the most punchable profession. Over the years, I've tried to embrace my high punchability quotient. I've also realized that now, during the plague, I'm far less punchable. I've learned that wearing a mask covers up the most punchable part of my face. If you have a punchable face like I do, don't worry, there have been a lot of successful people with punchable faces. Like this kid from Game of Thrones, Senator Ted Cruz, celebrity chef Guy Fieri. So please don't worry, because even if you have a punchable face, your dog will still love you. Don't be so sure about that. Oh look, I have tiny hands now. Can I please touch your snoot? She doesn't like it. I have to try the other one. Can I please touch your snoot? Isn't this nice?